Again, check your local laws. This is not gonna be legal for you guys to use in every single, every single setting, trust me. You get an idea of the scale and the size of this. This is, a, this is I don't know if this is a 10 pounder, but it looks to me about a 10 pounder. Look at my hand, you the size of it. Like the eye is the size of my thumb. Loose Lois in the drink. Oh, oh. sleepers. <laughs> Successfully launched. Dude. Oh, she barely fits in the net. Okay, and let's go. Come on, Lois, into your new home. Go, be free. Holy smokes, that's a big fish. <laughs> I hope you guys can see her swim off. Where's she gonna go, sit on the bottom? She's never had this much room in her whole life. I think Clark Spence over there, actually. Look at that, I think that, that, that's that's, that's Clark Spent. Okay, Clark Spent's in there, guys. There, here Clark Spent's gonna go. There's there's Clark Spent. Holy smokes, that's a big fish. A couple more left, Kevin said. So we'll say it's about 110. 110 fishes. Well, good morning, guys. It's another beautiful day at the off grid. We are just wrapping up deer hunting season. I'll probably put a video out not a little bit later because it's going to be a long detailed saga. But uh, today we're doing something that we have had to do. We've been looking forward to doing since we put the fish in the pond and that's to take them all out. We have limited sun right now. So our condor solar aerator is on trickle duty right now. We have the electric one still fired up. But Kevin wants to uh, skate on the pond this winter. And so that means that we have to unplug all our aeration system. Condor has done really, really great job of keeping our fish fully oxygenated. And the treatment has made our water ultra clear. And that was part of my things I wanted to accomplish this year was to be able to bow fish. But not only bow fish, I also want to test out some survival tools. So we've got a whole plethora of Timu survival gear that is normally illegal. So be careful how you guys use this. This is a private pond and I'm harvesting my fish that I own. And so the rules apply differently to me, thankfully. And that's part of the reason I got this pond so that I can do all these really cool experiments. The water is looking ultra clear. We have about 100 fish left in here. I've been taking one fish out a week and eating it throughout the season. You would not guess that there's 100 fish in there. Now, whether I can get them out through bow fishing, I don't know, but I've got my spin tackle gear as well. I've also got a ton of different gill nets I'm gonna try out. And uh, we're gonna try to get all, every single fish out. And as you know, we put a 15 pound rainbow trout in. We called her Loose Lois because she was a spawned out hen. And we've also got Clark Spent. They survived as far as I know. Whether we're gonna be able to get these fish out, I, I have no idea. Like I said, I have been hard at work grabbing as many fish as I can throughout the season, but today is D-Day. So let's test out this equipment and see which survival equipment works best. And this stuff is ultra inexpensive. Okay, so get it out a little further. And then the more you reel, the more it sinks. And you're gonna want it to sink a little bit because the fish are gonna be down a little bit near the bottom. Trying to get it past the... Mm. Oh, shit. So you're going to want to keep your rod tip down so it dives a little bit. Okay, now keep your rod tip down. Close the bale and reel fast, faster. I saw a fish go for it. You got one. Oh! I forgot the net. Keep it in the water. It's still on? Yeah. Oh, is it a big one? Yeah. <laughs> Holy shoot. Uh oh, uh oh, keep it away from the dark. Holy! <laughs> Look at that monster. <laughs> I saw it like a glint when it it swam like super fast when I was <laughs> first cast. That's a fish. You smile? Can I Snapchat this? Yeah, I will. 
I don't know if you can hear the splitter splatter, but that's because everything's melting. We had some super cold weather. We thought when I was not going to be able to get the fish out because it had frozen over, which it makes it really challenging to take everything out. So we're going to take, uh, I've got my Cabela's uh, kit here. It's a thermos and I used to like to use them as a fish tackle uh, dispensary. Um, I also got this, we'll probably use some heavier tackle. It's always nice to catch a fish, not just use survival stuff all the time, but we will use the survival stuff. I also got um, some ratchet straps. I want to show this stuff off because I got this from uh, Princess Auto. I also got a good deal on all this ammo too. Uh, through Timu and Princess Auto had really good deals on there. Um, I got some paracord rope. This might come in handy when we get into the gill netting stuff. And I got some clay ammo. That's for slingshot. I did slingshot some squirrels, so I have a video on that coming up soon too. And then uh, I've got a ton, bunch of tiny little hooks as well. Um, those are, are from Timu. And then we've got our cooler gear. Um, this is a Timu uh, shrimp trap. Uh, it may or may not work, but I grabbed everything that was survival related. And so we've got some bigger fish traps as well. Um, this is a, uh, I think it's some kind of throw gill net. And then we have a giant gill net. We should be able to string across the entire pond. So this I think is going to be the kill trap. Probably going to save that one for later. And then like I said, we've got the bow fish bow fishing rod that's the bow fishing pole the bow fishing bow and then we got uh, all the other tools that we need to catch fish but i'm gonna string on something right now and see if i can catch a fish before they get all spooked with the survival stuff part of my goal this year is to try to catch a fish out of the pond by having a good enough water quality for the bow fish so i think this would work too and then of course we have the standard standalone active fishing technique which is the spin rod and of course there's some other techniques as well you could do some, uh, some spearing fish we've done that in previous videos too with the big uh, Amish steel spear we've also used bone bone not super effective I think I would switch over to uh, stone so that's a future video using some more primitive stuff as well so without waiting too long let's get into the fishing techniques and figure out if you're in a survival situation what would you use my goal here is to catch a 15 pound rainbow trout. I, I want to grab Lois out of here. <laughs> That's the goal. So I'm going to use some pretty heavy, uh, little heavy uh, action crankbait here because rainbow are predatory fish. So they should, they should come up and grab this, but we'll find out. It's always about time in the water too, because I don't have a long cast here and I got to get those fish to come up off the bottom to grab a to grab a bait. So we'll see if we can get them a little bit active here. Sometimes you have to do a little bit of jerk paws to get them up. I imagine they're all near the bottom. I haven't seen any fish come up and float. You can see the log jam down there, the trout jam. That worked really good. It might be hanging out under there. I don't know. We will find out. I haven't seen any follows yet. When the dock was in over here, I was doing figure eights and I managed to get the fish to come up to grab it, which is kind of cool. <laughs> and figure eight is like a musky fishing, but the water was a little bit uh, warmer then. We've got, oh, there is a, I just missed a strike there. I just woke a fish up. I don't know if you guys probably didn't see that flash, but there was a flash there, all right. Oh, there's another miss, short strike again. That was a decent sized, I'd say that was a medium sized fish. Came up and took a poke, but missed him. Oh, there's another strike and a miss. And another miss there. That's short strike number three. And that was another medium sized fish. There's a, oh, another miss. Wow. These fish are curious, but not striking. Okay. Oh, there's it. There's a fish. There we go. Now we got one. Oh, we're going to get a good fight, too. Oh, there we go. That's not even a big one. Oh, we foul hooked him, that's why. Yeah, I think we foul hooked him, but that's okay. Every fish is coming out of this pond today. Let's we'll see how many fish we have left at the end of the day. After all that talking about the net, I forgot the net. I'm going to try to beach him. There, we gotta beach them. There we go. Yeah, we foul hooked them. Not what we wanted, but like I say, it's survival. You just get what you get. 
Okay, one fish down, <laughs> about 99 more to go. And then uh, I just slid all the gills, let them bleed out both sides. This will be uh, one for the pot. We might try to, we'll try to catch another fish if we can before we move on. Fish as many as we can out of the ice, out of the water. There we go. And we know there's fish here. I've got an idea. I've got an idea. <laughs> Finally. Only took about a thousand casts. Oh, I had to gob up more worm than I was hoping for. It's uh, one of the small ones. Real small ones. But they all got to come out. All right, we're going to simplify. We're going to get the survival stuff out. This is fire bait from Podski. We're just going to put this all over top of the swivel. Normally you take the swivel off, but we kind of want that uh, hook to be exposed. So I'll cover up the swivel. We're going to drop that down right to the middle because we know there's no snag hazards down the middle. It's just a mud bottom. Oh, and I missed the fish. Ah, that's what happens. There we go. That's a fish. First cast on the new, the new strategy. And we got one. Got a little plunker. This uh, Smedium. Still no sign of Lois or Clark. Clark spent two. And uh, lo loose Lois. You see them there. They're nice and chunky, that's for sure. There we go. 98 fish left to go. Unfortunately, I haven't seen any fish like just swimming at the top, doing their own business. And you can see how low the sun is. This is midday. So we're not really getting that sunshine that I need to do some like proper bow fishing. <laughs> but we are going to do our best here with what we have. I could bow fish pretty good if... <laughs> if there was enough sunlight, but there isn't. So we're gonna do our best. We're checking off the boxes as far as what survival. You can see them now. We're gonna make sure we're all set here. You can see them just below the surface there. They are, they're actually waiting for the, the feed to go down in the water column. So I'm gonna kind of just be shooting at shadows here. They're just not coming up. Come on, fish. So bow fishing as a survival strategy is really going to depend on whether you can actually see fish or not. <laughs> because if you don't, if you can't see fish, you're not going to be able to shoot them. But if you can see fish, you can obviously get a fish that's, you know, not wanting to bite. Oh, come on fish. Come on up. This is sinking feed too, so there was one. Sinking feed. So that means that, uh, that stuff sinks right down to the bottom. Like that was a mess there. They're just not going for it. No, I don't think they're going to go for it. You know, you can only catch a fish if you can see it with the bow fishing equipment. So, unless something changes, we get some really warm temps and those fish get fired up. That eliminates the bow fishing as one of the most effective tools. So I got these little carp baits, uh, which is actually kind of neat because it self closes. The only issue is that the pellets are just slightly smaller than the meshing. So it's falling out. Um, but you can see how this would work really well, you know, if you want to do for crawfish or, or uh, minnows and stuff like that. The, the entryway is a little bit funny because it's like kind of sealed. Um, 
and it's all just meshing, but it's very lightweight. It would be super easy to port this. Now, the question is whether a trout is gonna go in there. <laughs> My guess is no, a trout is not gonna go in there, but you never know. I think this would work really well for crawfish, minnows, smaller fish, perch, crappie, sunfish, you know, all the tiny fish. If a trout goes in there, I'll be super surprised, but I'm gonna leave it overnight because I don't think I'm gonna get every single trout out of this pond today. If one gets in there, it gets in there. But I would recommend this for like, it's super cheap, it's super easy to carry. You know, you get those metal ones, they're hard. They don't, you don't carry those with you. But this one folds up nicely. The bait canister can be, you can put anything in the bait canister. Oh, that's a perfect throw. Do we have enough rope to get all the way down to the very bottom? Passive fishing technique. Would you be surprised if there's a trout in there, Kev? Yes. I would be very surprised too. Okay. Tr Trouts aren't bottom feeders, are they? Well, they'll 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 go down there and they'll have a look. Mm. I'm not confident. I just got my hands in my pocket because I don't feel like I'm gonna get anything out of it. I'm not rubbing my hands. You're like, let's just go. But I know that would work for crawfish and minnows for sure. All right, so we're on our third. We got bow fishing, spin fishing, various types of tackle. We got a set trap. I wonder if they make a big one for like big fish, like a big funnel. Anyway, this is this is the one I'm most hopeful for, put it that way. This is like a $2 item. You could easily buy like 10 or 15 or 20 of them. Like I say, check your local laws because I think if somebody found you with this, you would be in trouble. It's a dangly fishnet. Essentially what we're gonna do here is just gonna unravel that and then you're gonna take it. You can see how this is gonna go here. We're gonna hook it up to the fishing rod I don't know if that's how I want to use it. Do I want to like try to catch fish with this? It's just a loop of... It's a hammock. It's a hammock. It's a fish hammock. So I don't know if this is going to fan out when it hits the water or what, but that's as advertised. I don't like, I don't know if these, the size of the gill net's going to be sufficient enough to work. Like what if I put a float on there and it kind of just hovers? I don't know. Because if it sits on the bottom, like... Am if I you gonna... pull it, it just turns into like a sock i guess or does it fan out in the water i don't know <laughs> okay i thought this would i thought this would go better but drag it across a fish and the fish is just gonna like tumble in it <laughs> <laughs> well i was hoping that would cast better and then it just <laughs> kind of goes back together it's just uh i want it like i want it like like spread out right yeah if it was floating. If it had a series of floats on. Stand out? Oh, we don't want to lose our camera here. Something got a bite. There's something, something, something fishing for the camera. Like, I think we need to maybe cast it in the shallows and see if it fans out or something. Oh no, it floats. Is that netting floating? Sort of. It's floating. It's kind of floating, right? Yeah. Okay, well, I could see how that might work if you had bait in the bottom and then a fish would like swim by. Put a bunch of worms. Stuff that thing full of worms. We don't have any worms. Oh. Can go look for some. Fishing float. So let's cast it out there. We'll leave it there. Not super confident. I, I was hopeful on that one because like, that's a small package. You could just easily grab it. But we'll see. Now we wait. All right. It's been about 15, 20 minutes. I don't, I don't feel anything on there. How long are you supposed to wait when you're gilding? Probably overnight, right? I think it needs like a weight and a float. Yeah, it's got to have floats. It's got to come out. It's, it's got to be stretched. Yeah, a, a weight and a float. Well. Wait till we get into the big guns. We're just started here. Should I do the cast net first or the stretch net? I feel like a cast net. It'll look like National Geographic. If I do, a, <laughs> I don't know if I can throw it properly. Well, we'll try that. That's the the one, the one we string across. and just string across. We're going to get fish, I the think. Curtain, the curtain net. Yeah. Okay, well, you want me to try the cast, the, the flingy I thing? I want to see it. I want to <laughs> see you do that. I've only done it once or twice. All right, well, then that, this has got to be reeled up because it's going to be out of the way. All right, this is probably the most expensive thing I bought. It's a, I think it's advertised as like a professional kind of thing. Whether it is or not, I don't know. It, like most expensive would be like 25 bucks. That looks good quality. The meshing's too small though. <laughs> for trout. This is for like bait fish. For um, like whale fish. I might get a fish in there because it's got heavy weights on the bottom. I might trap a fish. That's like, you got to put that on your arm. Well, that's so you don't lose it. Well, yeah, but like, what if it, like you get a really, really big fish? Air time. 
every time. Dude, I've caught two fish with the with the rod and reel so far, and I've caught nothing with the survival stuff so far. Is we're gonna get eliminated down to like one item that actually works, right? Oh, there is such a way to throw this, but I want to see it just like National Geographic. It's gonna cast out there. It's gonna like be a big circle, spin like a top, and then you just cast it. Away. But how does it flick out? Well, you gotta flick it. I think you gotta like throw half of it, and then like I don't think you throw. The... Maybe it'll just fan out. Try it. Just chuck it. But you gotta, no, you gotta grab like half of it. Like if you're gonna fail, fail fast. Like a bit in your mouth, and then you have to spin around, and then it fans out. But... Sounds like ripping out your teeth. Oh, ropes. Okay. Ready? Yep. Let's see what happens here. <laughs> We're surviving. <laughs> How many fish did I catch there? I think you scared a lot of them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it tightens itself. Yeah. So if we if we can manage to get this fanned out. Yeah, that was pretty cool. So whoever wants to come up and show me how this is done. Well, this works for you guys know this works for small fish, right? <laughs> if you can find a place for small fish or big fish, if you can find a place with big fish. <laughs> That's not even close to where we want it. There is a way to do this properly. You get a nice fan out and just go. That was linear. No, it was, it spun too much. All right, your turn. Yeah, I think you do crimp up the one side there. Right? I have a tendency of breaking your toys. Yeah, don't break it. I like to keep that. If I get like enough of it to... Yeah, keep going. Hit that You're on the right track. I, I you probably could do a bigger loop than that. Like a I can't, I wanna, there we go. And then you got to get it to, you want to get it to be a, like a nice big. <laughs> How many fish did you get? Well, you got to have to pull that back up. Pull this up. Yeah. Oh. Oh, that was a good one. That was a good one. That was your best chance. Let's see, if... see, you didn't spook all the fish with that. You just confused one fish and he swam right up in the middle of it. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm waiting. For what? A fish! He's either in it or not. Uh oh. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. You gotta get out of there. You gotta go right to the bin edge. Did oh, you hook no. it on the bin? Yep, you hooked it on the bin. Ah, for the love of Pete. What'd you think was gonna happen? I don't know. Alright, well, small interlude while we uh, rescue the most expensive survival fishing tool that I have from Timu. Kevin's gonna try to go to the other side and try to get it caught on the bin because the bin has all the metal bits, right? Like the fasteners. So I'm guessing it probably got in the fastener. Get it out of the bin on that side too. Go quick. Now it's stuck. On what? The other side? Well, again, I thought this, maybe you have to, no, the bin's all the way around. Doesn't matter which way you go. All right, well, I thought that would work better than it has. <laughs> all right, on to uh, survival tool number three. All right, we managed to get the other one out. Ineffective. This one was gonna be the one gonna be the one because that's really the only one I got left <laughs> there's gonna be ice fishing these fish out you really if you goof it that's it and this is a one-time use net and like I said <clears throat> you got to be really careful on winding this so that's the bottom it's a big game of cats in the cradle that's the bottom I'll leave the bottom alone you got the floats on the top whether they're strong enough we don't know Oh, sinkers in the bottom. All right, well, Kevin's got an idea here. I think the gill net is 50 feet. I don't know. Ideally, what we're going to be able to do is go all the way across. Who goes in the, who goes in the oh, drink? No. Who goes in the drink? No, it's just enough to struggle with it. No, it's fine. Well, as soon as you let go, it goes in the water. No, here, I got some more Princess Auto cord. I'll let you do it. Here, let grab this one. I'll just grab both here. If this was frozen, we'd just put two holes and then drag it across or do it, dig a channel and drop it in. Well, you want no, it to, that's pretty you good. Want, you want to know the start, though. Where's the start? Well, it doesn't matter. It does, sort of, because otherwise it won't pull apart. The uh, floats don't want to hold it up, which I think is a kind of a tendency with this stuff. Then the uh, rope will, so we can spangle and dangle it. How much is left? Half? Oh, we're getting there. I think it's a 50-footer. All right, that end secured. Uh, go up a little higher and then we can just drop it in and then maybe we get some good footage of dropping it in. 
It's gonna make sure the bottom fans out. Oh, that works really good. Oh, this works really good. Perfect. Okay, so that's. I feel like you should put something heavier on it. It'll sink. When you get a fish in there, it's gonna sink all the way down to the bottom. Like it's gonna drag down. Oh man, these fish are in trouble. All right, so what do we got? We just gotta loosen, loosen it off. Yeah, I gotta lose five. All right. Go ahead, loosen yours. I'm gonna get the camera ready because we wanna see, I wanna see those fish swimming in there. So Kevin's gonna lower it. Hopefully you don't have to both do that at the same time, but we'll find out. You can see that. The, hey? Surface tension is making it float. <laughs> it should. It should sink. Hopefully you guys can see that pretty good. If I get a good angle, we've got probably three feet of depth. Well, about four feet maybe. Um, ideally it was like 10 feet or so, but we got it nice and taut. The net went out just perfectly on that line right across. All we have to do basically is lower both sides at the same time and we should instantaneously get fish in there. And then as one fish gets in there, more fish are gonna get in there because fish are dumb and curious. So if they see one kind of fish struggling, then they're gonna rush in there. They're like, what's going on? There's something going on. And then they're gonna get tangled up and they're just gonna keep going and going and going until the effectiveness of the netting declines because it's gonna get wrapped and rolled up. So there is a finite number of fish you can catch in here, just depending on how much of that net is exposed. Once those fish get in there face first, they can't back out, their gills get caught, hence the name. And I think this is a good, actually, it's kind of interesting. There's two net mesh sizes here. There's like a three or four inch mesh size. And then, and then there's a small. So this is like dual purpose. You can catch small and big size fish. This is gonna really work well, watch. I'm not giving up on this one. I still think it's gonna work, but I don't see anything in the other gill net at the moment. Like it's not moving yet. And I know that's because the fish are going to be down pretty deep. So my thought is if I get that float up top like that, that it's going to suspend it at a good height. And see that float should hold it up about five feet and that float should let me know if I get a fish on there or not. So if it hovers right down to the bottom and it just kind of sits there a little bit like neutral buoyancy, that might be perfect. It's really only a matter of time before a fish swims through that. So I pull the gill net out because I can only be here for a couple hours. I want to set it overnight, but I can't come back tomorrow. <laughs> so you see the dilemma? <laughs> so I'm going to pull it out for a couple of days, leave it hanging, suspended, and I'll retry it. I know it's going to work, except the fish are deep. Oh, I don't know about this one. I know this will work with, uh, it'll work with the right fish. Trout don't seem to enjoy it too much, but we got a blizzard coming in now. I gotta get the kayak because I gotta re-rig this gill net so that it functions a lot better than right out of the box store-bought. Grab our Pelican kayak. They gave me these kayaks a long time ago to test out and they're pretty good quality, super durable. We're fighting the cold now. It's gonna be trickier than I would have hoped, but we'll see what we can do. As long as things go smoothly, it'll be a better idea. If things do not go smoothly, it will not be a better idea. It will be more hassle. Little links of chain, and we got a bunch of zip ties here. So the tricky part is gonna be getting us to stay where we wanna stay on this gill net here. So it shows up at your door with uh, just little little split shot weights. But everywhere there's a little split shot, we're gonna add a weight. Hopefully, easily enough, but we will find out. The wind is blowing us everywhere. Might be able to hang on to the net here and uh, keep herself steady while we attach these. So 
that's gonna help it sink a little bit better here. I watched uh, the aqua view last night just to kind of see what was going on as far as fish activity went. The fish were at a depth of about, um, let's say three to six feet off the bottom just because the water is getting colder at the top so they want to find some refuge so they go down deeper. We're going to try to space these out every maybe one or two feet or so. It doesn't have to be super perfect but we do want this to sink like straight away. As soon as we stick it in the water have it sink. My hands are super frozen right now. Oh golly. That is cold. Get on this nut while it's not windy. That's the trick. Just to be thorough. Oh, I don't want to get in there. Get me out. Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. It's getting worse. Okay, maybe we won't. We don't need to do that. All right, this should be the last one. I think that'll be all we need. Last one here. Come on, fingies. Okay, that's that. Next, I want to try to position the cameras here. Kind of somewhere down in the middle there. All right, for my next trick, I want, I want to film the fish swimming into the net. And so, got the aqua view here. And my old tripod here, which I've been abusing ever since it became not super functional. So my idea is to ta tape this uh, aqua view here. So we're gonna kind of aim it upward a little bit because that's where most of the action is gonna occur. Oh, come on, fingies and hands, work. These legs are real shoddy too on here. So I'm hoping they don't collapse in the water. A little bit of extra tape. Do I wanna be there? You're probably at the edge there, maybe, yeah. Right there. Can you still see the rope though? No, no rope's gone. Okay, because I don't want the rope in the field of view. Okay, stick the paddle down. I don't know if I'll get low enough. You see the paddle? The paddle's right in front of you. Dead, right dead center of the stream. The don't, don't move it. Okay, good. Okay, so make sure there's enough slack on all that rope. Oh, that looks perfect. Perfect, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I see into the abyss. All right, I'll leave that there. Um, you you want to go the other side and lower it? Sure. Yeah, I know, but the chain, on the, top. the chain will hook on the edge of the bin, right? Yeah. On both ends, and I'll only let it go down so far. Something's yeah, I can the see net. the line moving. Yeah, the line is moving. Something's in the net. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> not getting out. I caught a fish. I got a fish, man. Don't oh, see it? Oh, yep. no. He's struggling. No. Oh. We, we think, do you see pulling. something? I saw a fish. You're pulling towards just right the, at the bottom. Uh, I just saw a little boop. Came okay. up. The action. I can feel the action on the rope. Well, you might have more than one in there. Yeah. They're dumb if they're swimming in a straight line, right? They'll all follow. Until they uh, realize that there's something seriously wrong. Oh, yeah. No, no, there's, when you, did you just create tension there? Yeah. I, you could see it pull up. Take a guess. Four. Four? I'd say four, because I know there was two. <laughs> <laughs> they doubled? Well, I can feel them, like you can see them jostling the, uh, the rope. The fish is trying. Oh, we got them. There we go. We got one. Is there two? No, there's two. There's one behind it too. Yeah, there is. See the shadow one. behind it? Yeah. Well, you can tell when they first get in there, because you start, Start feeling on the line. Yeah. Well, this one's like maybe your third fish now. Oh, here's the chain. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So where do oh, we? There's the chain. So for the if you we're just keep past coming, the camera, just keep you're coming good. your way. I think you're clear of the camera there. Yeah. If you go right there, I leave it right where it is. Yeah. And we'll see them. We should be good. We we'll see them swim in. Yeah. Okay. Now, right you tie yours off, Cap. Uh -huh. I go to the middle leg. I think you're down too low. Yeah, it's okay. We'll, re okay. we'll reposition after once Kevin gets So you can do come back in like a couple hours or tomorrow? Or yeah. Tomorrow nice. maybe. We'll let it sit overnight. How close are we there? You gotta come up. Oh, Does that look four. like 
line right there just kind of right here yeah, there's a straight line i don't think you would see it like if anything you might be able to see a fish struggle right now right like that's kind of what we're going for well you just pull them through but the, the net's so fragile it just so i can't really like yeah They got so much power still. Whack like it just shreds the net, so it's not making the net any better. It's making the net worse. So there's only three. Yeah. <laughs> they're they're swimming all the time and they never stop. Whoa, I just went for a run to warm up my hands. Oh look at the net! Look at the net! Look at the net! It just jumped. I don't know if you guys can see that line here, but uh, it works as a really good indicator. Cause as soon as it starts bouncing, it means we got a fish. And I actually just checked the aqua view and uh, finally got one on film. I know we've got, I would guess maybe two or three on there now. I know two, we caught two right away and then we just got that third one. But uh, anytime that net starts bouncing up and down, you know there's a fish on there. I'm excited to see if we're gonna get Lois Laying Lois, Clark Spent. Um, they've eluded every single tactic I've thrown at them so far as far as fishing gear, fishing gear, every every worm, every doe bait, every lure, everything. And uh, will they succumb to the net? That's the thing. Or are we gonna be going into ice fishing season looking to get these legends out of the pond? All right guys, well it's next day. We are going to pull the Gill net and find out how successful we are. I cannot tell. You probably can't tell if there's any new fish in there. When we left yesterday, uh -oh. there were three. Where's the net? Oh, I feel some, I feel like tugging. Look at, that's not me. You feel that? That feels like an actually a big fish on there. I don't know if you can tell. Can you guys tell? Look at, <laughs> there's a big fish trap. That, oh, I can see a bunch at the other end. Where's the net? It's down there. Like right at the bottom. Yeah, it's sunk and it's stuck too. So this is gonna be a bit of a chore. I feel a heavy weight on there. Watch out, Frankie, get off there. Frankie's on the rope. I, I wonder if Lois, uh, laying Lois is on there or Clark Spent. That means uh, that means there was enough fish and weight to go, to tear it all the way apart. But there, there, it feels like there's a ton, an absolute mess of fish on the end of that line. There's a mess of fish. Here's all your net, here's all your fish. There we go. That's incredible. Watch him. I don't want to touch it. That one's down free? It's stuck. All right, leave it in the net there, I'll come over. All right, here's our haul. We've got a pretty good sized one here. This guy came out of the net, we would have lost them. So it's, there's a chance that some of the, there might be some fish on the bottom, but I doubt it. We were pretty careful about how we handled the net. Um, another medium here. And then we got three, uh, smaller sized ones, uh, but those are the ones were the hardest to catch. They really didn't want to swallow the hook too much. I also caught out three, so that's 10. Um, and I caught maybe 30 overall in the pond, so that's 40. So there's still like 100 fish left in that pond, which I suppose is possible. Um, we still will grab them ice fishing and uh, probably continue to fish them out as we can before we turn the aerator off. We can let the uh, aerator go right up until it freezes uh, solid. So we just turn it off one day, aerator stops, pond freezes, and in the meantime, we can continue to catch the fish. Um, so passing grade on this gill net, the other gill nets need to be modified. Well, this one needed to be modified a little bit with some weights, but it will work in a pinch. So for like $10, $15, I forget what I paid for this. It's a pretty good deal. The small ones I think can work. Um, it does fan out, so probably can use a little bit of a wire to loop it around to get it more expanded or just fish for it for different fish. Um, smaller size pan fish I think would work really good. And as far as the traps, we'll have to test those later. For minnows, uh, crawfish, that's a well portable trap. We'll continue on that experiment. But I'm happy with this variety of gillnet for sure. So if you guys want to invest in that, if it's legal in your area,
So I always find it useful to do a little bit of a video recap. So just for orientation purposes, the net is crossing from the left side of your screen to the right side. And you're actually gonna see a fish enter the frame on the lower left side and get caught in the net. You see it right there, it just swam in and now it's entangled in the mesh. And uh, I just want to point out that, you know, not every size mesh is going to work with fish. And I'm going to give you some examples here because we do see some fish swim by, even bump into the net without getting caught. And so when you're picking a gill net for survival, you definitely want to match the size of the fish that you're trying to catch which, with the size of the opening. So this mesh was actually kind of interesting because one side had a small size gill net and the other side had a larger size but the fish has to approach from the right direction. So here's some other fish kind of swimming about and around, but as I said, that net is traveling from the left side of the frame all the way across the way to the right side. So these fish are either high, too high or too low. Here's one that kind of dodges it moving from left to right and center to right. And then here's some other fish kind of bumping into the net and then realizing that it's a little bit of a problem right there and then turning away. So that fish actually bumped into the net and then moved out of the way. And if you want to rewind, you can actually see where I dropped a bunch of food down to the bottom where's a big bait cloud that just dropped all the way to the floor. And here's an example of what the fish react once they're in the net. They basically thrash around and then become more and more entangled the more they move and uh, this basically destroys the net so each gill net has a little bit of a lifespan you can increase the longevity of the, the net by using some stronger gauge uh, monofilament this is like probably four pound test i would guess so it's easy to remove the fish but it's also uh, it makes a big mess and that's not something that you can really protect um, but gill nets really do have a lifespan and now what's really 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 interesting here is we have a massive fish swim by and i'm going to slow it down a little bit and then i'll put up a still frame image of lois and you guys can let me know if you think this is lois i have compared this fish to all of the other fish and it is a big fish whether it's Lois, we'll have to continue on this saga to try to track her down. I don't think that Gillnet had the right size to catch her, but I was hoping. Well guys, there's the sperm sac. I don't know if you guys have ever seen anything like that, but there's actually eggs. There's about a handful of eggs mixed in with the sperm sac. Can't say I've ever seen that. Like right in here. And I don't think it's contamination because uh, this is the first fish I've cleaned today. Eggs right in there mixed in with the male sperm sac. Interesting. No takers? No takers. Okay, you gonna... <clears throat> no, I'm, I'm just gonna concentrate on dying my way. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want the vigor of the fish? No? When you eat the brains of an animal, you inherit the intelligence of the fish. Oh yeah. So you eat this, the nuts and the sperm and you the virility and the vigor, no? I've gotten enough trouble on vigorous. <laughs> You're too vigorous? Yeah. <laughs> I like the Bass Pro uh, shirt you got on. Yeah. Did Kevin give it to you? He did. Yeah, look, you can see him in the dark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like a hunting uniform. I did eat uh, sperm and egg sack soup. Oh yeah? Yeah, it was pretty good. Yeah. On a survival challenge, because we, we got the um, whale wife. Yeah. She's a crab bait, right? So it's completely full of bones. So until you smoke it for a long period of time, you can't really eat the ale wife. Okay. You're not really supposed to, it's bait. Um, so I took all of the eggs and all the sperm and I mixed them all together in a soup. Yeah. And it had a, like a good balance of estrogen and testosterone. <laughs> 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 it was a hearty meal, right? It was just thick. It's salt and pepper, but uh, the wrong way. So I'll, <laughs> so I'll fry that up with some adobo on that. Yeah. You're gonna have, you're gonna have a bite. No, somebody's, <laughs> gonna have, somebody's gonna have a bite. Frankie will enjoy it right there. Yeah. <laughs> well, almost ready to go. Yeah, our oil is uh, oh, semi-liquid. The frosting it. 
Grant's been staying at the log house, so everything in the log house froze. If you put it on the floor. <laughs> that's true. If it's at chest height, it's all good. Yeah, it's chest height and above. That's pretty much cabin life for you in the oh, winter. Yeah. You can get it hot all the way down to the bottom, but... I think you got to make the wood stove go lower. Possibly, or you will be in shorts by the time, because you'll be baking so oh, yeah. so badly, you'll just, you can't breathe anymore. I'm just keeping my glove on here. It's cold. It's hard holding fish when it's so cold. Uh, a little, a little skiff. Yeah. <laughs> there was more before. We were actually lucky to do this big take because we were getting to the point where once it freezes over, it's like, then we're ice fishing. Legitimate, we're spear fishing, which there's got to be some fish left. Oh yeah. There's a hundred fish. I don't think there's fish left. There's fish left. I don't think there's a hundred, but I don't know where they all went. You guys can, I'm just Lois, laying Lois, Lois, loose Lois. She's so. this big. She's this big and she disappeared. Or she's still in there. In the bottom. Maybe in the bottom, hanging out. Big fish. It's this big. You gotta remember, the less they are, the smarter ones are the last ones to survive, right? It's true. You think she's smart? Well, she's not been caught yet. (laughs) That's true. Worst chopsticks ever. Yeah, I sucked that one in. Huh? No, it's actually good. Yeah, that's really good. You'll eat the eggs, but you won't eat the sperm. Oh, salty caviar. Salty caviar. That's the eggs again. The salty sperm. It's creamy in the middle. Oh, it's really creamy in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What does it taste like? It really doesn't taste like anything. No. No. Not even fishy. Okay, Frankie can have some. Well, it's probably too hot for Frankie, but she's gonna love it. What's up? What's that? <laughs> Here, Frankie. Here. What's Drop that it on the ground. No, she won't pick it up off the ground. Here. Oh yeah. She's scared of the sticks. We got a hand feeder. Frankie, what? sit, sit, Frankie, sit. <laughs> Here, Frankie. She got her tuck tail behind her. Here, here, Frankie. Oh, it's gooey. It's goobery. Frankie, you want this? It's warm. What's that? Like that? <laughs> here, Frankie. No? Come on, Frankie. Here, Frankie. Frankie. Here, Frankie. You try some? Come on, Frankie, sit. She's got a tail between her legs. Here, want some? There you go. Dogs won't eat it, but Chris will. How's that fish? It's excellent. It's cooked perfect. It's crispy on the one side. The dog wouldn't even eat it. Well, I bet you she wouldn't even eat a fish. It doesn't taste like anything. Uh, I know. It's just creamy goodness. I know. I'm not. It's, it's not even fishy. It does kind of look like, like I don't know. Take a bite. No, nah, I'm. Come good. on. No. How come pure pressure's not working? I don't know. It's because we've been taught not to uh, accept pure pressure. I don't know. Just one bite. Over forty. One bite. Did you, did you try a bite? It doesn't taste like anything. Did I? <laughs> did you try? One? I just put it on my tongue. <laughs> it just tastes like wadobo. I don't. I don't want to eat it. I, I don't know. My stomach hasn't been feeling great lately, so I don't really want to, you know, test it with fish. What's this? Firm. Yeah, exactly. I, yeah, I don't want to test. <laughs> no, no firm. Mm. <laughs> nom 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 nom. You want some? <laughs> come on, Frankie. <laughs> Frankie, come on. <laughs> We're gonna try to get more fish out. Maybe we'll ice fish it. Maybe we'll spear fish it. Um, you know. Maybe we'll just keep fishing until it gets cold enough we can't fish anymore. Well, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you enjoyed the tests of all the survival gills. Gill net, give you guys some ideas on things that you might buy and invest in if, in case you are in a tough situation and you need to find food for sure. Oh, so you do like it. You feel guilty about that? You bum. Oh, so you do like it. Hey? 
Tuck my tail. Yeah. It's pretty good, eh, Frankie? 